Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On the Avenue. We almost went this whole season without mentioning Matthew 25. If you're anything like me, you'll want to know how your church helps out in the community. And this is where our Missions and Mercy offerings contribute. Matthew 25 is a ministry that serves residents in the Harris County area that live in the 770 zip codes. And this has been a thing since the early years of the church. They assist with rent, mortgage, lights, water, and gas bills. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the director of Matthew 25, Reverend Benita Barnes. Let's go. Okay, so I'm here with Reverend Benita Barnes. She is the director of Matthew 25, is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. Tell us what you do for Matthew 25, how many people you have working with you, because I know you don't do this all by yourself. Correct, right. correct. Well, there are only, believe it or not, four people in Matthew 25. Oh, wow, okay. We have two of us that are seeing the clients and two of us that are taking the calls. Okay. So they take the calls every day from nine until one o'clock and they set them up to come the next day. I have with me Maria Guillory, and she basically will see the community. She's helping okay. the community. And what I normally do is help members. Okay. So with the community, they make their appointments, they come in and we assist them with whatever bills. It's normally water, lights, rent, gas, okay. and different things, you know, like that, yeah. that we will assist uh, the community with. Any grocery church. assistance or no? We do have grocery assistance. Okay. Um, we do give out gift cards every oh, okay. now and then Good to, to like H-E-B and Walmart and different things like that. It just depends on what people are needing yeah. that we will purchase and try to help people out the best that we possibly can. Okay. So we're open Monday through Thursday from nine to one and then from two to four. Normally during the afternoon time, we're just preparing everything we've done between nine and one, uh, one o'clock and taking calls and and doing things like that. So there's really only four of us in the department. Prior to COVID, there were, there was one person coming in, well, there were people coming in every day. Mm -hmm. Volunteers of this church okay. will come, men mm -hmm. and women, answer the phones, take the calls, and, um, you know, set up the appointments for us. But that was prior to COVID. Since COVID, a lot of the members have, uh, they're not volunteering quite as much as they, as they used to. Okay. And that's a kind of understandable. Right. Because most of our uh, people that were volunteering were members that have retired from their jobs and they had something to do oh, okay. every day. Okay, nice. And so you mentioned you had volunteering opportunities during COVID, but not so much now? Or? Not so much okay. now. Not so much now. So how can someone really contribute to Matthew 25 if they wanted to? If they wanted to volunteer. Yeah. Matter of fact, I had a call today. Okay. And the young lady, it was a young lady that wanted to volunteer. I don't have anything until like June or Thanksgiving. During those times, we do feed the community mm -hmm. and they can come in and help us get that program together so that we can feed people. We usually feed over a thousand people. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a few yeah. people that uh, volunteer from the church in all different age groups and even in, in uh, groups of children that are members of the church also. Mm -hmm. So during those times, I, I asked the young lady to just call back yeah. during, uh, when it gets closer to the summertime. Okay. Because we will need that help to feed those that we feed during Juneteenth and during Thanksgiving. Nice, okay. We also have a back to school program and we've had that, oh my gosh, for over, over 20 years now. Mm. And what we do with that is we have people in the community that have come to us for assistance with other bills and things like that. Okay. We have them sign up their kids so that we can get them uniforms. Okay. So we usually give them academy cards so that they can get their uniforms. Now, is this by we, appointment only or you can just come up anytime? Well, they can come up and just sign in. Okay. And then on that day, we're usually in the fellowship hall here. Oh, okay or in the gym, and we set that up. When we first started, we were doing haircuts for boys and different things like that. And we would have games and things for kids to play mm -hmm. in the gym uh, and all different kind of things like that while their parents are getting together mm -hmm. and getting the supplies from, from kindergarten or really pre-K 
through the 12th grade. Mm -hmm. So we do that once a year also. And I work with Kim Washington, who has the children's ministry. We put that together and we work together on that so we can wow. assist the kids uh, that come through that need in this community, mostly in this community and those that have come to us before for other things. Wow, I love that. That yes. touches me. Um, so what other services you said? Gas, water, rent, rent, and then lights, lights. Okay. And then the Mana House, is that something? Mana that's House is a food pantry that was started by five different churches oh. in this area. Wow. So it's not just uh, Wheeler Avenue. It's St. Luke's Episcopal, which is on Wheeler. Mm -hmm. It's Pilgrim Congregational. And um, it's, oh, I forgot. I forgot the yes. name of it. That's okay. It's St. John's. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's about four different churches, okay. four or five different churches, and they all commit. We have a board and they all commit to helping. And what we do is they're open on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and every third Saturday. And we do that through the Houston Food Bank that we get food from them mm -hmm. through the Houston Food Bank and each church each church will donate a certain amount of money a month to help us do what we do for the community. So Manor House has been around forever. It was yeah. started with Reverend Lawson and uh, several other ministers in this community and mm -hmm. it's been going since then. Nice, and then Manor House, is that by appointment only or can you? No, you can walk in. Okay. We, we, we try to do just this area, 7704 yes. okay. and 21. Okay. Uh, at Manor House, but if you need food and you call us, we will allow you to go and get food and you know from the pantry, even though you're not in that zip code. Because okay. we don't want to turn anybody down that really need food. Okay, and so when people come to Matthew 25 by appointment, what if you can? What is discussed within those appointments that makes them eligible for our? Well, help? when we're talking to them on the phone, there are certain things that okay. we require you to have to have. Okay, we're helping you with your rent. You have to be late on the rent. We're not just paying rent. Right. You have to be late on the rent and you have to show a late notice to us when you come in, your IDs and different information like that. Okay. If you're working, we need your paycheck stuff, things like that. Okay. For the lights, water and gas, your bill has to be passed due. So we're not just paying the bill. It's about to be cut off. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to keep you from that cut off date. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier that you partner with these other churches in the area for Mana House. Um, who is it that we met for Thanksgiving? It was Bill? That was Bill? Bill White. Okay, what but is he doing? Bill White, he was at First Presbyterian when I met him doing the exact same thing that I do here. Okay. But he's with another ministry now where he is assisting men and women who have been incarcerated and they're coming off the street and they're trying to get them back into society. Oh, okay. So that's what he's doing now. Okay. Do we have any other services like that with Wheeler or is that our only umbrella? We, we just partnered, he and I okay. partnered after he left First Presbyterian okay. so that we could assist you know, those that are in need. And while we, we still do work with First Presbyterian because First Presbyterian will do your ID. Let's say you have a driver's license that has expired mm -hmm. and something has happened and you can't afford to get it. Mm -hmm. First Presbyterian will accept a letter from us saying, Hey, can you help this person get their ID, help them get their birth certificate and things like that. Okay. Um, how many people in regards to like people who are coming in for appointments or calls, how many people do you think you see on a weekly basis? On a weekly basis, probably around 60 something people. It just okay. depends. Um, last year during our fiscal year, we assisted over 2,100 people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we do at least 30 to 40 people a week uh, with Maria and myself. So it could be up to 60 to 80 people a week. What do you guys need as a Matthew 25 organization or ministry? What do you need from your members or people surrounding the We just area? need members to keep contributing to Missions and Mercy. Okay. I mean, Pastor talks about Mission and Mercy every Sunday when it's time for uh, us to give. Mm -hmm. So we just need them to continue to give because we can't do it. Without, um, without the funding coming in. And so uh, a lot of us do. We doesn't matter if you give $5, it, yeah, helps. it helps. Whatever you give helps. Wow. And so that's basically what we need is just members to continue 
to give to Missions and Mercy so that we can help those that are less fortunate. And we have several different ministries that Matthew 25 even give to. Okay. One like is who? called 3A Bereavement. Okay, what's that one? 3A Bereavement is a nonprofit organization that help people bury people. Okay, right. So if you don't have any insurance on your family or someone that dies suddenly in the family, we contribute to 3A and, and Miss Lawson started that. Okay. She started that contribution years ago. And so we continue to give to 3A and they're in this neighborhood also. So um, when people call and say, I need help, we can refer them to 3A Bereavement. We also donate to Search Homeless Program, which is downtown on Congress. And with that program, uh, we are helping those get that are on the street get off the street. Mm -hmm. So search, we, we've been giving to search for a long time. So what search does, they help people find jobs. They help them get apartments to live in. They have a tiny tots care uh, program mm -hmm. where if you are on the street and you have a child, we find your job. You can send your child to that daycare for free. So uh, we uh, contribute to search and uh, different, different programs, you know, like that 3A Bereavement Search and uh, Banner House, we contribute to those so that we can assist people that are needing assistance in the community. Okay, nice. Well, I love that you are so overwhelmed with blessings where you're able to pour into yeah. other ministries. That yeah, is beautiful. Oh, that is great, honestly. It is, it's, it's beautiful. Cause a lot of places can't do yeah. it. Yeah. And even That's when true. we talk to some of the people that we talk to, and they're not members, we'll say, have you asked your church? And they'll say, my church can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because you gotta have people giving mm -hmm. into the church, not just the tithes, we, we want the tithes, right. but we also wanna help people outside of that. Mm -hmm. And so many people are hurting that people don't even realize, right. members and non-members yep. that are hurting, and you don't know that they're hurting until they call in and talk to you about what's going on with yeah. them. Well, you're doing great work, honestly. Love it. Yeah. I so you're, it. how long have you been director? 21 years. 21 years, okay. 21 years, Nice. Yes. And you love it still? I still love it. Yeah. I still I love talking to people. And, you know, it's kind of a counseling part too because yeah. people, like I said, some people are just hurting. And I mean, I'm, I could tell some stories about the people that we have seen mm -hmm. and we have helped and they have been so thankful that we were able to do what we were able to do. Well, so I'm thankful to even have a church that does something like this. I know, it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really is, because there's not a whole lot of churches yeah. that can do it. So we're, we're glad that we can. Oh, I love that. There are a lot of agencies out there, but there's just not a lot of churches, churches doing it. that are doing it. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Well, thank you so much for speaking well, thank with you me. For asking. Now, your next volunteer opportunity will be in June. Is that what I was hearing? Well, yeah, in June. Well, we'll have June for Juneteenth. But we'll also be doing back to school around the same time. Around the same time. OK. Yeah. And we have to have volunteers for that. How many volunteers are you seeking? Usually for back to school, since we have first uh, pre-K through 12th grade, mm -hmm. it's usually two to three people on the tables or there's somebody that's uh, watching the kids go and play the games mm -hmm. and and the jumping little things that yeah. they do. Uh, there's somebody to take tickets for them to do that. Or, so I would say about 30. Okay. people for back to school and then when we do Juneteenth it's around about the same 30 okay. 40 people when we do that so that we'll have people that can serve them greet them pastor comes and talk to them the executive pastor will talk to them and they love it they love it when they sit down for a meal and, and they come in and they greet them and talk to them love it yeah so, you know, I'm asking for myself. That's why I keep asking about volunteer opportunities because um, I would really love to be a mm -hmm. part of this ministry and contribute mm -hmm. in any way possible. Um, how can we get some events going um, for volunteers? Does that make sense? How can but, we get? Like what, what type of events can we put together so we can one, give back to the community, but also for those who want to volunteer, to volunteer. into this ministry. Ooh, yeah. That's a hard one. I'm not sure. We'll have that. to put our brains together and come up with yeah, something. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that and see what we could come up with. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking You're to welcome. me today. I'm happy to learn about Matthew 25. I'm really passionate about this type of work. Yeah. And, and you're and doing great work. believe it or not, when they asked me to come, I didn't want to go. What? To, <laughs> to Matthew 25. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why not? I had worked this program before at a different church. Oh, okay. And I was like, I'm not doing it It's anymore. a lot to take on. But God, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, was out of work mm -hmm. and looking for a job. And I got several calls to come. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. But God said, yeah, you're going to do it. And I've been at 21 <laughs> Two decades <laughs> later, you're still here. And you're still kicking. And you're running I something know. really major here. So I know. And, you're meant and to it's be awesome. here. I love it. Yeah. Okay, um, do you have a social media page or no? No, I don't. That's another thing we'll have to work on. That's yeah. another thing we'll have to put together. Yeah. Because we need to stay connected to Matthew 25 and everything, the work that you're doing. Yeah. So I would shout you out on your page, but you can just <laughs> follow us at Wheeler BC, um, Wheeler Avenue BC, at all of our social media platforms just to stay informed and connected to what we're doing as a church, but also Matthew 25. And I just want to thank you again for joining thank me you. today. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> Matthew 25 is doing amazing things, right? And since this year, this year is the year of amazing things, I wanted to showcase a few amazing testimonies that we've gotten over a few months um, in 2023. So you ready? I got my little iPad here. I'm gonna be digging through um, some electronic submissions on our prayer wall. We have a prayer and praise report wall if you're unfamiliar. It's on the Wheeler Avenue website and you can drop down any prayer uh, request or praise reports that you have and we'll be praying for you. And we're excited for you whenever you drop your praise reports down. All right, so let's go ahead and start with those. We have a few actually that were sent to me at the end of the Daniel Fast. Now, the Daniel Fast has really blessed a lot of people. And from these praise reports, I think you will say the same thing. So let's start with the first one. Okay, so the first praise report we have is Kim Dennison. And if I'm saying your names incorrectly, I do apologize. Kim says, in the process of the Daniel Fast, God proved himself to be Jehovah Jireh, amen. My entire school loan debt of $32,334.62 was eliminated and forgiven on January 20th, 2023. To God be the glory. Amen, Ken, I'm so excited for you. We also have Camila Hill. She says, I am going through a tough time financially during this season and did not know where my rent was going to come from. I prayed and I stayed faithful and my rent was paid this month by a close friend. Thank the Lord for close friends. I'm so happy for you. Carol Nicholas says, God is doing amazing things. This is my first Daniel fast. The doctor has taken me off insulin and I am down 15 pounds. Enjoying this new journey, the drive to Houston from Shre Shreveport, walk, run, pray was worth it. Lori Moss says, the Lord healed three family members that suffered health challenges. Bless me with a new job after praying and waiting for five months. To God be the glory for doing amazing things. Absolutely. Raphael Moe says, while fasting and praying, multiple doors were open. New job went from stress to an amazing opportunity. A new home is on the way and many more blessings I see on the horizons. I see the same for you too, Raphael. Congratulations. Mammy Williams, Lord, I glorify your name for answering my prayer for permanent employment. You give us the ability to earn wealth. Thank you so much. Mevin Wells says, praise God. I made it through this year's fast and prayer time. I give God glory that there what I thought would be difficult and hard, but was peaceful and energizing. I feel much better. Miss Lee Caston says, I am so thankful to God for my participation in the Daniel Fast. It was an amazing time for me, the quality time I shared with God with no interruptions and eating clean. Amazing God. Wanda Williams says, thank God for allowing me to retire from Harris County last week after 30 years and for allowing me to build my first new home eight months ago in Third Ward down the street from Wheeler Avenue. To God be the glory. And congratulations on your retirement. Jess says, Daniel Fast was a remarkable experience. He restored and sustained me and my family and then brought a new job opportunity. I love that for you. Valerie Cooper says, the Lord paid for my books for a disciple class. Check came in the mail that I was not expecting and miracles are happening with my seniors at Cashmere Center. Linda says, I was waiting on a list for an apartment, which was supposed to be for several months, but God opened the door within one week. They reduced my price, had no job, stepped out of faith, and recently got a job. Linda, that is amazing. Oh my gosh. Angela Holland says, during this Daniel fast, I had some specific prayers and needs and God answered. Financial blessing, guidance on a family estate, 
clarity about some things. And she says, fasting and praying works. Amen. Um, wow. Now, if you haven't visited the Wheeler Avenue um, website, please do. So you can see these prayers reports, praise reports. They are coming in every single week, every single week, daily, it seems like. Um, and then also on our social media, if you're not following us at Wheeler Avenue BC, sometimes we'll ask for you to share your testimonies and you can see others' testimonies there too as well. But I just wanna thank you all so much for submi your sub submitting your testimonies and trusting us with that information. But also thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time on The Avenue. Bye.